This is a tutorial on how to make your own circuit board. There are already some tutorials on this out there, but I would like to share my method with you, which I've been working on for some time. In this video, I'm making two boards simultaneously, which doesn't change anything compared to making only one board. Enjoy! To make your own circuit boards, you'll need a measuring cup and two or more sealed containers, glass or plastic. In addition, a picture frame, or what's left of it, along with something to fasten the glass and the cardboard together, is needed. Along with a red light source, or a very dim flashlight, to give you vision in the darkness. A plastic spoon is needed to mix the chemicals. For chemicals, you'll need ferric chloride and developer for photosensitive circuit boards, along with something to weigh your ingredients. You'll also need the circuit you want to make printed in black and white on transparent foil. The circuit will be made onto a photosensitive circuit board. Rubber gloves, as a minimum, are required when handling dangerous chemicals. PCB drill bits are a must for mounting through hole components into your circuit boards. Sizes 0.6 and 0.8 millimeters are needed. I also recommend documenting any attempts in making circuit boards so that lessons learned through failures are not forgotten. Now cut out a circuit board that is bigger than the circuit you are trying to make so that you have no problems when illuminating the circuit board. We will proceed by taping the transparent foil to the glass with the printed side up so that less light will leak under the ink when illuminating the board. Next, turn on your red light source and turn off all other lights. When the room is dark, peel off the protective foil from the light sensitive board. Place the now exposed side of the board on the transparent foil and make sure they match. Then, put the cardboard back of the picture frame onto the glass panel and press them together using magnets or paper clips. Remember, we did these steps in a dark room so that bright light sources wouldn't ruin the photosensitive board. Now we expose the board. With my high wattage halogen lamp, the exposure time is about 10 minutes at 20 centimeters away. You will have to find out for yourself which exposure time and distance is right for you. After exposure, remove the magnets or paper clips which kept the circuit board in place. Then, quickly put the circuit in a dark place before the next step. I repeated these steps for my second board. The next step is to develop your board. To do this, read the instructions that came with your developer and mix the solution accordingly. With my developer, it's said to dissolve one pack of developer in one liter of lukewarm water or half a pack in half a liter of water. Pure sodium hydroxide can also be used, but I don't recommend it as I've had bad experiences with it in the past. Now take your board and immediately drop it into the solution. 
The exposed parts of the board should change color quickly and the bowl should be constantly agitated to ensure that fresh developer reaches the board. When the exposed areas have lost their color and look like bare, shiny copper, which should be the case after about 3 minutes, take the board out of the solution and rinse it with cold water. The developer solution cannot be reused, so dispose of it correctly. Now we have gotten rid of the exposed photosensitive coating, we can now etch the board in ferric chloride. Put the board in ferric chloride and stir every 3 to 5 minutes. Depending on how used your ferric chloride is, etching can take 20 minutes to 1 hour. When all copper has been etched off the exposed areas, rinse the board with water. The ferric chloride can be reused. Now we must get rid of the residual coating on the traces by cleaning the board with acetone or nail polish remover. Make sure the copper traces are nice and shiny. An optional but recommended step is to tin your board. Inform yourself about which tinning method would be right for you. The last step is to drill the holes for the through hole components. For most of my part holes, I use a 0.8mm drill bit. After you've drilled your holes, you are finished with your very own circuit board, and can fully enjoy soldering and working with it. This is my first tutorial and I would love to hear some feedback on what to improve. I will have more videos coming in the future so make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and good luck with whatever you're up to.